not only in the uh, in the NFL, but also college football as well. And joining us now on the OK Tires Hotline from Kentucky Sports Radio, WKYT in Lexington, Buzz Baker. Buzz, good morning to you. How are you? Guys, what's going on? He really blew his hamstring. Yeah, he really blew his hamstring. There's a picture of him. He's mid-stride, and he's got this this grotesque look on his face, and he's got his right. He's got his left hand go, going down and pulling on his left hamstring. <laughs> it's hilarious, man. Oh no. See, everybody, everybody around the country wonders why the SEC is so dominant in football, and it's because it's because with all this advanced training and everything, everybody has gone overboard. Even guys that are, you know, my age, you know, and and they shouldn't worry about stuff like this. You know, everybody's all concerned with their body fat, and they forget that we believe gravy is one of the four major food groups, and, and it keeps <laughs> things like hamstrings and things like that well lubricated. You don't have that kind of issue. And, and I, since my playing days, and I've set my helmet on the shelf, I've been staying well lubricated. Yes, I, I, exactly. I've made that commitment to myself. Doctor says you're the picture of health. You don't blow out any hammies, and you're able to get out there, you know, and run with the kids a little bit when you need to, and everything's good. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's absolutely right. Visiting with Buzz Baker, Kentucky Sports Radio. Buzz, appreciate you joining us this morning. We've we've had. Uh, a conversation about Nick Saban, and I want to get your thoughts on it because you're you're a good third party uh, to hear from. Uh, Nick Saban signing his contract yesterday, six point five million dollars a year with a million dollar uh, um, with up to a million dollars uh, worth of uh, not benefits but incentives to right. get him over seven million. He's going to be the highest paid coach in sports. Is he overpaid or underpaid? Golly, I, you know, I still think he's underpaid. I mean, that, that, to me, this is a discussion that goes that goes well beyond uh, football. And uh, you know that old adage about uh, you know to go back to quarterback, they get they get too much too much criticism and not enough praise, or however you want to phrase it, or too much praise, not enough criticism, whatever the deal is. When you look at somebody that's at the top of an organization, let's just go outside of football for a second. Let's look at the automobile industry. Now, this gal that's come in and tried to run things at GM, I think, has tried to hit things like straight on. But they've recalled about 5 billion cars ever since she's, she's taken the helm. And then you look at what happened at the Ford Motor Company when they brought this Alan Mulally guy in who had not come from the automobile industry, and he turned that bad boy around in like four or five years. I, I think, I think you know, corporate CEO leadership is the absolute essential thing that you have to have if, if you're going to be one of those marquee deals. And, and you know, the, the, the analogy I always give people, you know, is, is, is in Lexington, you know, it's obviously basketball most of the time. I, I mean, what is Kentucky basketball worth and how significant is it under John Calipari and how laughable was it under Billy Gillespie? And, and so my answer to your question would be, I still think the guy's underpaid, but I think he's, you, you can you can argue that, but I think he's worth every penny he's getting. Buzz, and, and it's I want to talk Kentucky football, but it's it's natural a lot of times when you get somebody on from the Bluegrass State to talk basketball. But I, I think you make an interesting comparison there with with the Ford Motor Company and GM. Uh, but you also make another one when you look at uh, uh, Nick Saban and John Calipari, uh, because I, I, basketball means as much to the state of Kentucky as football does. Uh, in the state of Alabama, are these two guys the top of their profession? Uh, is everybody looking up at at, at these two? I, I think they are. And the interesting thing is, is there are two guys that I think have the same core beliefs, but they go about it radically differently. You, you know, Calipari is the Pied Piper of all things Kentucky basketball, and the Pied Piper of all things Calipari. You know, and, and Saban's just not just not cut like that. But I'll never forget we were doing a thing. Uh, for the SEC Digital Network uh, two years ago down at Sandestin. And uh, we were broadcasting live down there and had a bunch of coaches, you know, on the web stream and everything. And uh, and Calipari sought out Saban and got him to commit, giving him about a half hour, 45 minutes sometime while they were down there so that they could kind of share some ideas. And he could he could get uh, – Calipari specifically wanted to, to get into Saban had a little bit about how he handled the team coming back off the championship. It was after Kentucky's 2012 championship. And, 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 you know, the little things, what you have to do, you know, the packaging can be entirely different. But but those two guys, I think, are, are the absolute standard uh, for, for what that white guy in the 
right place can mean for a program. Buzz Baker, Kentucky Sports Radio, as we visit with him right here on Houston Huber on the home of Alabama sports, Tide 99.1 and Tide99.1.com. Buzz, uh, moving forward into football, uh, Kentucky had a rough year last year, uh, not winning a conference game. However, uh, with the with the hire of Mark Stoops, uh, does the fan base feel like that Kentucky Kentucky football is getting back into the right track of of where they were uh, in, in days of with well maybe not Ray Guy but uh, Hal Mummy and, and 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 Tim Couch when they were making bowls is 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 Mark Stoops that guy that can get them back to that spot. Well, I think people hope that he is, and it's not just a fan base, but obviously the administration feels that way too because the guy got a contract extension off a two-win season, which is kind of remarkable in this day and age of, of SEC football. But, but, but he has come in and and he has he has markedly ramped up uh, recruiting, and and that needed to happen. Uh, but now it's got to uh, translate itself uh, into results on the field. I, I think that uh, the staff handled the situation. They couldn't have handled it any better last year. I mean, it was, you know, listen, everybody likes Joker Phillips, you know, he, he's doing well now down at Florida and he's a native Kentucky son, but, but I mean, this program was just absolutely just devoid of any quality talent. I, I mean, just, I mean, it was awful the lack of talent that was here. And so, you know, they come in and they hire Neil Brown, who had been with Mommy and, you know, who runs that air raid offense and everything, you know. But but, but you've got to have people to run. And, and these guys, uh, you know, they coached up the guys they had. Uh, they, they they never dogged them. Uh, they didn't dog the other staff. They just they just went about their work. And they put together two really good recruiting classes. But as, but as you guys know, as much as you covered uh, on the football side, you, you know, to give you an analogy, to go back to this basketball thing, you know, Kentucky coming off that basketball probation. When Patino came here, Bob Nashburn, and, and that made an immediate impact on the court, and that brought another couple of guys in, and pretty soon, you know, they got this bad boy turned around. I mean, look at what Calipari did in one off season uh, in the wake of, uh, of the Billy Gillespie rubble. But you just can't do that in football in this league. It, it's, it's a much more involved process. And I think they've taken some good first steps, but now they got to take those second and third steps. Buzz, you mentioned how recruiting, it's the lifeblood of an organization, and, and Mark has really put emphasis on getting that talent in there. One of those guys we competed with you guys uh, against as far as Matt Elam, kid, a native son of Kentucky, big defensive tackle. Have you been able to see the big monster as the on-campus yet? I, I, I have not. Uh, I, think those, I think those guys were coming in. It's been kind of a screwy sort of year up here. I mean, we're just we're just finishing up public school tomorrow because of all the snow we had up here this winter. So the semester things are kind of cut off. But but you know that's the that's the kind of guy you've got to have. But but as you guys know in football, and, and this is no comment toward Elam. I mean, if you get a five star guy, a top ten recruit in basketball. That that guy is a top ten recruit. But we've seen some guys that have been five stars or whatever that just haven't panned out for whatever reason in football. I mean, injury is a is a is a big part of the deal, you know, continuing to progress. And and so certainly uh from a talent standpoint and from a perception standpoint, you know, he was he was a big guy to get. But but I think the thing that Stoops and his staff knows is is the situation they're in. You gotta get a lot of those guys. Buzz Baker, Kentucky Sports Radio. Buzz, I look at the schedule here. You guys have a tough, tough away schedule. Got to go to the Swamp down in Florida, down in Baton Rouge, then travel over to Missouri, and then you finish the year on the road with Tennessee and uh, Louisville, your in-state rival. What's the expectation for Kentucky this year? What what has to be done in order for it to seem like a success? You know, I, I guess the thing about it is, is, is with the schedule, there's an opportunity to uh, – uh, you know, at least match the win total in the first two weeks. I mean, they've got Ohio University and, uh, I want to say it's UT Martin or somebody like that first, first couple of weeks. I, you know, I, I don't know whether it's, whether it's wins or losses. I mean, how many, how many programs do you know that are talking about getting better, uh, in the SEC that is going to be having a quarterback that's going to be playing, uh, that, you know, hadn't taken a snap in the SEC? I mean, that just, that just doesn't happen. I mean, that didn't even happen. You know, I was down doing some Raycom stuff a couple of weeks ago with Chris Lee 
who's now on staff uh, at Florida as a grad assistant. And, I mean, even when Tebow kind of burst on the scene, you know, he wasn't the guy. You know, Urban Meyer came out and said, Chris Leak is our guy, and they had the Tebow package and, you know, all that stuff. But you just don't turn a guy loose as a freshman in the SEC and kind of move the ball forward. And and then they, they've got to find playmakers. And, and, and you guys understand that. I mean, guys that can make plays on both sides of the ball. And do they have those guys in the house yet? Yeah, they probably got some. They certainly got more than they've had the last couple of years. But, but how many do they have? Uh, can they stay healthy? Uh, and with depth not being what they want it to be, can they continue to, to, to make those plays week after week and not just in certain spots? That's, that's the big question to me. Buzz, and we're kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum here. Football taking uh, the the captain's chair here in, in Tuscaloosa and basketball kind of takes the back seat and, and vice versa in Lexington. Uh, one of the things that we struggle with as a fan base in Tuscaloosa is determining what the expectation of our basketball program is right, right. Uh, and, and exactly what we want out of it. What is that for you, for, for, for the Kentucky fan base in, in football? What is it that Kentucky is wanting – from Mark Stoops as a whole, you know, I, I think that's an interesting question. I, I, I think uh, I think the fan base, you know, it's it's a it's it's a really you know pretty neat atmosphere in Lexington for for the lack of overall success that they've had, especially you know if you come up here for a night game in October and the horses are racing at Keeneland during the day and you can go to a football game at night, and so you know the atmosphere is is really really good. And I think the Bama fans who were here would would find that to be the case. But it, well, it, I was there good, I was there last year and had a blast. Oh yeah. I mean it, it's great. And, and and for the lack of success for people to uh to rally around it the way that they do, I think surprises uh, an awful lot of people. But I think it's you know, people get spoiled and I don't want to sound, you know, like my darn dad cut rest his soul. But you know, I mean when Rich Brooks was here, you know and I think Rich did a couple of different things. He took advantage of some folks that weren't as strong uh, at that period of time in the league. And, and, and he, he and his staff were able to go out, identify some guys, get them in here, coach them up, you know, people like Randall Cobb, you know, that some other people passed on and things like that, Jacob Penny, others. Uh, and, and, you know, they went to, what, five straight bowl games? And, and then by the end of Rich's tenure, uh, you know, people were kind of grumbling. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what are you people grumbling about? You, know, you ought to be doing backhand flips. And <laughs> so in this league, as, as tough as it is, if, if they can be competitive, if they can get into the postseason mix, now, you know, eventually if you can get the thing going, yeah, okay, you can have bigger dreams. But you just got to get the deal back to being competitive, I believe, now. And, and if people, uh, you know, are, are realistic about that, uh, then I, then I think that's where they are. You know, coming to the conclusion that fans are realistic about anything is kind of a kind of a crapshoot at this point. <laughs> well, we definitely we definitely have our fair share of rabid fans in both fan bases. I'll tell you that much. I can't imagine that. <laughs> Buzz Baker, Kentucky Sports Radio. Buzz, appreciate your time this morning, brother. Guys, always great talking to you. Have a great day. Yes, sir. You too, Buzz Baker. All right, Kentucky Sports Radio.